Uh, how many strength coaches does it take to poorly set up a chain? Making a bundle correctly. <laughs> Spot me! Yeah. I'm going in! No? Yeah. Oh yeah. What the? Also, oh, you didn't pop it. Ah! Uh -huh. How do we set up bands and chains? There is a correct way to do it, and there is an incorrect way to do it. Uh, there are many different potential combinations of tension that you can use, and we're going to discuss how to actually use bands and chains, maybe even when to use them, but certainly this video is going to focus on how to set them up. The one thing that we cannot have with our chain setups is chains free hanging and swinging back and forth. If you wanted to do some kind of weird stability type training, that could be a reason to do it. But if you're doing using bands and chains in the traditional format that is used in uh, most strength programs, we want the chains deloaded to the ground uh, and we don't want the chain to come all the way up to the bar. The reason for that is Kyle's range of motion uh, in his squat is going to dictate the amount of chain that we're using, not necessarily how heavy it is, but how long the links are because we want that chain to be nearly fully deloaded at the bottom and maximally loaded as he's squatting. Go ahead and show him your range of motion here, Kyle. Yep, just a normal squat. Maybe pause at the bottom. Now you see at the very bottom of Kyle's squat, there should be some tension. We don't want these to be completely loose. Go a little bit lower, Kyle. We don't want these to be completely loose and then jamming back onto tension because that's gonna end up with some uneven patterning because the chains deload to the ground unevenly. They pile up unevenly. But for your specific setup, you have to do a little bit of tinkering and figure out exactly where your bottom position is. It's very helpful to have leader chains such as this so that you can count the number of links that are in the chain to determine your bottom point. And like I said, it might take a set or two to figure out, but you should be using maximal deload at the bottom without going completely to zero uh, with maximal loading throughout the squat. So what we can have is a single chain hanging from the top down. The reason for that is you're only really adding bar weight at that point. If the chain is not maximally deloading into the ground, you're not actually changing the force curve of that movement that much. Bands and chains are used to accommodate or to alter the force curve in a desirable manner, whatever that might be to you, and you can play with tensions to determine that. But for most setups, we have chains exactly as they are. You can even set your uh, rack height to be about your unrack position or like the top of your squat. For most people, it's gonna be slightly lower to measure it out from there, but you're still gonna have to do a little bit of tinkering there. If we're using bands on a squat, the only real consideration that we have is that the band is uh, anchored in your actual pattern. So we can't have bands, and we won't set them up completely here, but we would never have bands in the front of this peg or in the very back. We want them so that when we're squatting, the bands are right in the middle of our foot and uh, they're not pulling us forward, pulling us back, pulling us left and right, or anything of that nature. We also do not wanna use one single ultra heavy band or one uh, really mini band that's choked up completely. The reason for that is the unequal amount of force or uh, load that is going to be loaded through that band as you actually go through the squat. If we were to use uh, one of our heaviest bands in this type of a pattern, we would have almost zero loading at the bottom and we'd probably have like 200 plus pounds at the top, which would be, uh, it would likely be too far away from uh, just straight load to have a, a real appreciable effect. Now, if you want to figure out how much your bands and chains weigh, do not use, uh, especially for bands like the charts that come from the manufacturer, get yourself one of these $15 fish scales, put a carabiner on either side and actually measure the tension. Any other considerations for squat, Kyle? Just on that same note, Brandon talked about making sure it's not in front of you or in back of you. We're here at a mono today, but think about how far you're walking out. Some people take very short steps, so it can be almost underneath their unrack. If you're unracking in a power rack and you take big steps back, you might want to fix that, but that's going to lead the bands to be pulled too far in one direction. So when I set up bands, I set them up um, with an empty bar set up 
walk back in my normal setup, look down and make sure they're adjusted to where my squat's gonna be, not where my unrack is going to be. Now when it comes to bench press, setup's gonna be a little bit different in all of these setups, especially your band setups. If you don't have a fancy combo rack like we do, the ghost combo rack, or if you just have a regular standard bench or something like that, just use heavy dumbbells or something of that nature to anchor it. If you're training at home, could be worthwhile for you to install some uh, D-rings into your platform. It's also another good alternative. Kyle, go ahead and show them this setup. Now this setup might look good the way it is, but this is actually not how you should set up your banded bench press. The reason for that is we have almost zero tension at the very bottom. This is coming completely loose. Go ahead and re-rack it here, Kyle. If we want to change this tension, we can, we have a few options here. We can either double loop the band up top if we want to load this section greater, or we can take the bottom and loop it further around the pegs to add more towards the bottom. That'll give this a little bit more tautness throughout the range of motion, and you might have to play with it and measure again for yourself specifically. Try that one out, Kyle, and see how it goes. Now, we didn't do it to the other side here. It's not that much weight, so I'm not too concerned about Kyle. And this is not a hurt Kyle video, so we don't want him to, uh, to, to be <laughs> a little bit off left or right, though. But that's how we would change that bottom position. And it does matter how the bands uh, connect to your platform because we can keep this tension about the same. It's going to increase a little bit if we really wrap this around tight here. But we'll want to make sure that we take any of the slack out of that bottom position uh, of this anchor and we just kind of grab that, work it around a little bit, work it around a little bit until that tension's out or until there's tension into the band rather. And we want to make sure we do that to both sides because it's very easy on these types of setups to get tension, uh, altered tensions from left to right. Another consideration that we make is actually using the same bands that came from the same set because I don't know how tight manufacturing specifications are on bands. They don't seem like they're that great. Uh, but even if you have, say, a red band and a red band, if one has more use in it and it's a little more worn, it's not going to be uh, as tensioned as your brand new band. So always use the same bands left to right. And if you have to use separate bands, again, what we want to do here is measure it. So we take our fish scale, we go to the very bottom, unload it so that we clear it, and then we pull to about the top of the range of motion, which for here is about eight kilograms, about 16 pounds, give or take per side. It's also super important that just as with the squat that we have this pulling, thank you Kyle, in the middle of the bar path. If it's in front of it or behind it, you're going to end up really fighting that band, which is not ideal. Brandon uh, just hit on that, right? We talk about it in squat. This might look like it's at an awkward angle, but if you look back to where my unrack was, once I get it out into position, it's probably just about perfectly straight following my forward path. Also make sure that no matter what you set up is, uh, is fairly safe, right? And it's not going to slip. That's one of the other problems with a band completely deloaded. I've seen them come off one side completely. Personally, we talked about weighing uh, things out. Personally, I like to test everything. I'll, I'll set it up, I'm consistent with my setup, but I'll unrack in the bench, test, make sure it feels good. Even if I was already warmed up, I'm not just gonna put this on 225, 315, and hope that it feels the same, because bands do change over time, as Brandon said. Now, when it comes to deadlifting, there's a few different considerations that we need to make. Uh, the reason for that is the length of band that's pre-tensioned is quite a bit longer uh, than other exercises. So there's already a bunch of tension on this because the band has to be stretched so far. There's gonna be a ton of tension built into that band when you add that to the actual range of motion of the movement as well. So choosing bands can get kind of tricky uh, for your deadlifts and they're usually not going to be the same bands that you would use for your squat. They might be the same for the bench press. It kind of just depends on how you have it set up. But the classic setup is just doubled over mini bands or whatever a light-ish band is because you're essentially going to have, instead of just two strands going up, you're going to have all four because they are doubled up. It's super important if you actually wanna get some life out of your bands to use fat grips or something else to buffer against the bar. Now we have a deadlift bar here that actually has a smooth section here, so we don't have to use fat grips. We put them on just for the video. But if you're using a power bar or any other kind of bar, it's very worth your while to invest in a pair of these fat grips or something to protect your bands from the actual knurling because you will go through them very quickly. 
You can put the bands around the collar or potentially around the actual sleeve. The problem with that though is when you're loading plates into it, it can contact it and it can get a little weird. So we prefer to keep them right here and it keeps it very consistent throughout the deadlift as well. Other consideration we'll make is if the band is too heavy, what we would do is take one of these strands off and unload it through the bottom. So we have here, simply like that. Hold that for me, Kyle. Thank you. Now we have half the tension here, and this is how we would change, change band tensions for the deadlift. We wouldn't necessarily use different bands always, we would just add or take away strands where you're using. And you can all, go all the way down to a single strand, and it works pretty effectively. When it comes to uh, using chains, we won't demo that here, but we'll talk through it. The main consideration that we wanna make is that the chains are not deloading into the plates. So if you have chains on the very end, that can work if you're not going that heavy. Uh, if you're going uh, with anything above 405, the amount of width that the plates are going to take are likely to contact the chains. In that situation, we want the chains directly in the center of the bar itself. Uh, and the best way to do that, in my opinion, is to link the chains together, whatever strands you have, spread them out evenly over the top. There is gonna be a little bit of movement, but as long as you have equal weight behind and in front of the bar, you should be okay for most of it. But we would put that directly in the center. If we had someone who was deadlifting conventional, we might consider going out a little bit wider. Kind of depends on their uh, actual setup. With all of our lifting, of course, we want to be pretty scientific and we want you to be safe. That's one of the important reasons to not let chains get out underneath the plates because when it comes down, the bar is going to come on. Even if you're deadlifting really heavy, could be a recipe for disaster. I've seen bands come off on uh, squats and bench press just because they weren't set up well and once again they were deloaded too much at the bottom. You can imagine all of a sudden deloading 100 pounds of bands on one side, it would be like taking off a 100 pound plate. Doesn't sound like a good idea. I have played with bands and chains a lot. I used to measure them out um, almost every session. Really that's uh, unnecessary but you know you can be pretty specific. When Brandon and I set this up today I told him go in hole number four. One, two, three, four. Yep, because I know that four is my number. I've been squatting with these. I know exactly where to put it. It's not a guessing game every time. We know how much we load on the bar with uh, plates, right? We put a five on, a 10 on, a two and a half. Why not just pay attention to what hole and or what band peg you are using? Yep, the final consideration, especially for deadlifts, is you are unlikely to have two pairs of dumbbells that are as heavy, you're not going to have four 100 pound dumbbells. So it's unlikely that you'll be able to anchor bands with dumbbells. Uh, it's very worth your while to go to your Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever hardware store you have, pick up a couple D-rings and just screw them into your platform. Uh, they don't take up too much space, attach a carabiner to them and that's the best way to actually attach bands to a deadlift. Probably the best way to do it in a squat if you don't have, um, if you don't have pegs. Brandon, Kyle out.